RTX 3070, a great GPU for 1080p gaming, but can it game as comfortably at 4K resolution? I fed this GPU for about 2 years at this point. For a solid year, I was gaming at 1080p, which was quite enjoyable by the way, but I wanted a bigger resolution to make editing easier, so I upgraded to a 4K monitor, and that's pretty much what I've been using since then. Even though I mainly do editing and content creation these days, I still game every now and then. I love gaming as much as I used to, and I think it would be a good idea to take you guys along for the ride and show you my daily experience of what it's like to game on RTX 3070 at 4K resolution. Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on high settings with FSR off. Now even though we are getting well over 144 FPS, which is the refresh rate of my monitor by the way, I still play with VSync on because it just makes the game a lot smoother. But in this case, I unlocked the FPS to show you guys the full potential of this GPU. I'll be keeping VSync off throughout the tests. Generally, when playing at 4K resolution, you'll notice that a lot of games benefit from extra VRAM, especially if you play on higher settings. But CS2 isn't that demanding, so if your GPU has only 8 gigs of VRAM, it won't be a limiting factor here. Besides, this is a shooter after all, and you won't even have enough time to admire the graphics. So, you will most likely be playing on lower settings, which will use even less of the GPU's VRAM. Let's move on to something a bit more demanding, Apex Legends. Like CS2, we are running this game on high settings. In the air, we are getting somewhere between 70 to 100 FPS, depending on where we're looking. And on the ground, it even goes up to 180 sometimes. At this point, you guys should have noticed that I play all shooters on high settings, even though it is advised to play them on low. But I honestly prefer higher settings and better visuals over high FPS. It just feels a lot more enjoyable to me, and turning this thing on makes it look even smoother. In terms of VRAM, Apex Legends doesn't use a lot of it either, not on high settings at least. But there is an option to increase the quality of the textures, which will increase the amount of VRAM the game uses. I personally don't notice any difference between high and ultra textures, so I just keep them on high. Although there are some people that like to crank the graphics and just feel the satisfaction of having everything maxed out. But I honestly think that it's like a placebo effect and they don't really see the visual difference. Nowadays, GPU marketing is all about how much more FPS you're gonna get with the newer ones. But think about it, do you honestly need a better GPU? Of course we all wish we had an RTX 4090, but if you're already having fun and you can play any game at your desired resolution, then don't worry about the upgrades too much. When you're making an investment, make sure that it's worth it for you. I used to do my editing on a Ryzen 5 5500. It's not the best or the worst CPU, but my issue with it was that it was doing editing really slowly, and I wanted to do it faster, I was legitimately losing time, and if I had a lot of effects on the videos, it would stutter a lot and it was unwatchable in the editing software, hence why I invested into such a powerful CPU. Anyhow, let's continue with our testing. Doom Eternal is the first game that got us VRAM Limited. As long as we keep the settings on high, the game will run smooth, but once we set the graphics to ultra or higher, it will start having severe issues. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, I don't really notice the difference between high and ultra nightmare settings because of how fast everything is happening, but it would be cool if I was able to play my favorite game on the highest settings with ray tracing on. In terms of FPS, we averaged around 120 when there was a lot of action on the screen, but outside of that, it even went as high as 180. Now, Need for Speed Heat, on the other hand, barely broke 60 FPS. This is one of the few games that I wish I was able to play on ultra settings. I really like the graphics here, but unfortunately, if we go any higher than the high preset, the game will start stuttering because 8 gigs of VRAM is not enough for ultra settings. Besides, even if it was, the GPU wouldn't be able to provide us with stable 60 plus FPS anyway, it's simply too weak. But don't get me wrong, 70 ish FPS on high settings looks and feels great. And yes, it drops to low 50s at the start of the race, but that's pretty much the only time you're gonna see it go below 60, most of the times it'll stay above that. Halo Infinite is another game that I really like. 
I usually play it on high settings with 60% resolution scale, it's similar to DLSS balanced, and if I'm being honest here, I can't really notice the difference between native 4K and the upscale one. Without the upscaling, we're getting around 55 FPS, but with upscaling, it goes up to 90, hence why I decided to play it on upscaled resolution. In terms of VRAM, I've never had any issues. High settings with 60% resolution scale seems to be just perfect for this game. Age of Empires 3, an old classic that I used to play in mid-2000s. The original game came out in 2005, but in 2020, they decided to upgrade the graphics and basically release the same game once again with a lot more features and modern graphics, which is what we're playing right now. On the highest settings, we're getting somewhere between 70 to 90 FPS, depending on what's happening. And even though there are some starters every now and then, they're not really noticeable and it's something that the game does on its own, I don't think having better hardware will fix it. But either way, our GPU handles the game without a problem at native 4K resolution. And last but not least, Cyberpunk. We're playing this game on high-ish settings with DLSS set to balanced. Without the upscaling, the game will struggle to even achieve 60 FPS, hence why we have the LSS enabled. And with these settings, the FPS never goes below 60, no matter how intensive the game gets. Cyberpunk is known for its amazing, but at the same time, really demanding graphics. If we wanna enable path tracing, set the graphics to Psycho and turn the LSS off, even the RTX 4090 will struggle to give us 60 FPS. I mean, the game will look amazing, but is it actually worth thousands of dollars just to play it on the best possible settings? From my point of view, the settings we're able to play these games on are perfectly acceptable and I think there's no need to upgrade to a better card, not in the nearest future at least. A lot of people say that 8 gigs of VRAM is terrible and it's unacceptable, but I think the issue is way less severe than what people make it out to be. Like I usually say, the more the better, but based on what we saw today, I think 8GB is fine too. Overall, I can't say that I'm extremely satisfied with the performance of RTX 3070 at 4K resolution, but I think it did way better than it should have. I don't know why Nvidia thought it was a good idea to limit this GPU to 8GB of VRAM, but it is what it is, let's make the best out of what we have. Do I advise buying this GPU for 4K gaming? No, you really should consider buying something else that has at least 10 gigs of VRAM, like an RTX 3080 or something, but if you already own a 3070, then I think you're good for a few years. You'll have to make a few sacrifices, but I think it'll be fine for the most part. And before we end the video, I wanna thank you guys for your amazing support. I always try my best to make the video really interesting and provide you guys with the best possible quality. Speaking of which, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I upgraded my microphone and instead of my phone, now I'm able to record with this HyperX Solocast. I'm really satisfied with it and I wanna recommend it to anyone that is looking for a microphone under $40. On that note, let's wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.